Hi, Tricia. Um, thank you so much for joining me today to have um, the first, be the first to feature in our Rimi Reflections interview series. Um, it's really lovely to have you um, with me here today. Um, what we're going to be talking about is just really some of the challenges that are faced by small business owners today. Um, obviously, the, the current climate has been quite tricky over the last sort of year or so. Um, so it's just really to start to, to understand some of the challenges that people are facing today. So let's start by um tell me about the mind hub oh thanks sophie for having me along so yeah i'm trisha my company is the mind hub um the mind hub has been evolving really since probably 2010 um i began by offering mindfulness training and mindful based well-being workshops to individuals and organizations but in more recent years um, I've been doing a lot of uh, mental health awareness and first aid training because I'm also now an instructor member for mental health first aid England which is really fantastic but I think all the way through the mission has always been to help people to um, you know live in a much more positive way have more awareness of and manage their health and well-being yeah excellent and that, those those sort of things right now are just so important aren't they aren't they you know different people have had different experiences over the last year or so and I know you know we will probably hark back to that a little bit through our conversation today but definitely the, the idea of mindfulness the idea of relaxation and of positive mental well-being is so important so that's that's brilliant yeah Excellent. Okay, so tell me a little bit about your background. What what inspired you to set up the Mind Hub all, the, all those years ago now? Yeah, I know. I can't believe when I actually just said that, you know, 2010, it, it doesn't seem that long ago, to be honest. Time really does go by so quick. But um, yeah, I mean, what I'm doing now is completely different uh, to what I did in my previous sort of 20 years or so of, of working. I mean, I've done a few things, but um, largely my, in, in my employed kind of life has been in investment banking, uh, mainly uh, Morgan Stanley and Credit Suisse, um, stints on trading floors and up in the IBD sections and also in pharma. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, great fun, but quite, uh, quite stressful, quite full on roles. And I witnessed quite a lot of people burning out at that time, uh, mm. particularly in the banking sector. Um, and at that time, I wasn't doing so well myself either. I was living with quite a lot of high anxiety, uh, frequent panic attacks uh, and subsequently depression. So um, and then it was later on when after I had my first child, actually, I had quite a serious about postnatal depression and reached quite a crisis point there. And that's when I thought, you know, actually something has to change. Yeah. Uh, something has to change. It has to change for me. Um, also, my life has changed. I'm, I'm a mother now, and but, but work is actually really important to me. Mm. I've always worked, will always continue to work. So it was like, okay, what, what can I do now? And I think, you know, with the amount of burnout that I had witnessed, my own experiences, um, and then the mindfulness that really helped me to, to become well, really. I guess was the inspiration for setting up the Mind Hub, and I, I really hope that the work that I'm doing, um, and then the work that the other people who that are doing, who have been on my courses, I really believe we're sending out all these amazing ripple effects for positive change around the way that people view mental health. So, yeah, I guess past yeah. experiences were my inspiration for for what yeah. I'm doing. That's brilliant. And, and I think that's quite important as well, if you're talking about some of these topics to actually share your story. And, and I know firsthand from um, attending one of your mindfulness courses that you do bring that personal experience into the way that you're talking to people and helping people. And I think that that really helps because it's kind of saying, I understand, I, I can resonate, I can I can relate to where, maybe where you've come from. So um, yeah. that's really important. Um, so yeah. that's good. And it's lovely you touched on that because that's really a key message as well when we're teaching mental health first aid. A lot of people worry about having a conversation. Am I going to say the right thing? Am I going to say the wrong thing? You know, it's just it's just coming from a place of, um, you know, empathy and a genuine want mm -hmm. to help. That's all we really need. And, and being able to empathise with people on a, and meet people on a really human level, mm -hmm. I think yeah. 
is the key yeah, yeah no, that's important um so what do you enjoy most about what you do what's your you know the thing that you think oh yeah I really like I really like doing that <laughs> um there's so many things I mean working for yourself being in control of that there's so many benefits uh flexible working <laughs> <laughs> you know there's so many elements but I think what I really get a kick out of and what really keeps me going is when someone you know says to me actually I found that really helpful or I can see how that might help me or you know I put, made this little change and I could feel that real shift that really lights me up I love that um, and so I get really inspired by that and also I get really inspired by seeing how inspired people feel at the end of courses you know um, yes yeah, yeah. so I it's, yeah it's all of that really that, that yeah. part. it's like that light bulb moment isn't it the realization of actually what you're talking to people about and they're like oh yeah I get it I can see how, how that can help me so um no that's great that's great and I guess by the, the reverse what do you perhaps least enjoy about what it is that you do do at the moment <laughs> oh you know me Sophie admin <laughs> yes I can relate to that one <laughs> I am I am all about the fun stuff and the doing and all that exciting stuff and learning and yeah being really curious about stuff but then when I have to stand still and do for me if other people love it don't they you know but for me it's yeah all that kind of some of the back office kind of stuff the ad mini stuff yeah. you know, is not so much fun I can <laughs> procrastinator in the world when it comes to that so and and actually what I've really struggled with this last 18 months which I think a lot of people probably resonate with as well is you know I'm quite sociable I like to be out I like to be out on client sites meeting people talking um you know standing up and delivering I sound like a real show off I'm actually not I am fairly introverted but I still like to be in and amongst it all and having to work solo just sat down all day staring into a screen um yeah I found quite quite difficult it's been quite lonely mm. at times uh, yeah. and tiring yeah. as well, you know in a, in a different kind of you know just yeah I, I can definitely resonate with that for sure mm. it's I mean it's been a, a, a godsend I suppose in many ways that we have had the ability to connect with people you know via tools such as this through zoom or teams which perhaps didn't exist maybe you know even three years ago mm. um, but yes it's it's really nice now we're kind of hopefully coming out the other side to start to get that balance back again of doing some in-person stuff as well as well as the online online piece as well and I did I did one a couple of weeks back for a client and then went to a hotel and did a full day training and it was fantastic and I was really worried I'm gonna be able to stand up all day or remember how this goes but um yeah it was all good and excellent out. oh that's good that's good and I always love this question so um if I was one of your colleagues or, or perhaps one of your friends or family um how would you describe yourself in five words oh um Okay, so I always like to try and be really positive um, and quite chilled, mm -hmm. um, uh, fun loving and curious always curious nice yeah I like the, the curious one yeah. yeah I've got um I don't know if I've told you but I've actually got a, a vision board which is something a, a technique I borrowed from from um you know a really good friend and one of the things I've got in there is about curiosity and continuing to learn so I'm complete I'm completely with you on that one um, well that is one of the 10 keys for happier living is um you know learning new skills I think having that curiosity yeah, and learning is is really key excellent yeah good um okay tell me one thing that we might not know about you um okay I'd love to be really cultured here and say oh I've written a novel or I'm an amazing cellist or something like that but um but you may have to just stick with the fact that I can write my name with my toes and I <laughs> count to ten in Thai uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm a reflexologist some people might not know that as well so you yeah know, we'll dabble with people's feet I don't do it so much anymore but um well, there's three things <laughs> excellent uh, yeah I love that I'm gonna have to next time I see you you're gonna have to show you're gonna have to write your name with your toes <laughs> I can still do it because I, I tried with my daughter not long ago to prove to her that I could do it so um yeah you excellent. never know when it might come in handy well this is true if you break your hand or something <laughs> 
um what's the one learning that you would tell your younger self so if we if you were going back to maybe when you were leaving school or um, perhaps just in your first job or two what's the one thing that you would say to yourself yeah so interesting that you say you know you you, you pick out there uh, about school so when I was at school and um I had the meeting with my careers officer who annoyingly had the same surname as my maiden name at the time but he, um, I told him that I wanted to be a primary school teacher. And he said to me, um, people from the school that I was at weren't good enough to be teachers and that I should set my sights a little lower. I know, look at those wow. eyes. You would not hear anyone say that now. And I was totally yeah. capable of doing that. But he really crushed me at that time. Um, and so I didn't pursue, at that time, university. I, I did go back at 25. I got my place at uni to become a teacher. But then actually I decided I didn't want to do that anymore anyway. So, But I just did that to prove to myself that I could could get in so around that time I would say believe in yourself hmm. yeah that's a really hard one especially given that example that you've just you've just spoken about there you know yeah. sometimes something somebody says intentionally or otherwise can actually often be so crushing so yeah. it's lots of these off-the-cuff remarks that are given by you know other people teachers parents whoever who we've long forgotten in our minds but they do stay ingrained and they're often yeah be the real cause of deep-rooted anxiety and mm. you know all sorts of things so um, for me led to fairly lifelong battle with something called imposter syndrome but um but in a funny way actually it really spurred me on to go and achieve whatever I wanted mm. but I've kind of been I think proving that for quite some time so I would say to my younger self don't doubt yourself believe in yourself you are good enough you know mm. yeah um, don't be so hard on yourself and it's fine it all works out okay in the end yeah it does I, I do agree with you on that I think um I, I've had some things in my life that perhaps didn't go quite to plan and actually you look back on it and reflect and go okay well maybe that wasn't the right way forward anyway so it's just somebody telling me that I needed to take a different path and a different route yeah. so yeah oh, I, I understand that um what tip would you give to somebody wanting to perhaps get involved in mental well-being or, or mindfulness um, today? So you know, either a mum perhaps wanting to retrain or, or as we were talking about, somebody maybe just leaving school. What, what's the one piece of advice you would give them to help them on the way? Yeah, so I would say definitely join a course as a participant yourself and just to find out what it's all about. Um, I think particularly with with mindfulness training um you know it's 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 very worthwhile meaningful work that you do but depending on how much of, of a career or earning potential out of that might not be quite what you think so really researching you know go looking into that a little bit more um mm. but I would definitely say for the mental health training and mindfulness is to go on courses yourself um, have a chat with instructors and asking them about their typical day and how they found it and what obstacles they face too and I think that's really helpful to do that because often we go into things perhaps with some rose tinted glasses and it's mm. good like, oh, most people are happy I'm always I always have people asking me this question actually and someone on the last mindfulness course came because they were thinking about mindfulness bit of a career change and we've had lots of conversations so you'll find people will, will call me and I'll have that <laughs> um, you know just to find out really what's involved um, and I always say research what the professional bodies are in the um, things that you would like to teach and make sure that you join the most professional one the actual mm. regulated professional body and train um, with a with a reputable training company that adheres to their guidelines because uh, mm. so people there's so many courses for these things that you can download cheap courses off Facebook for you know pennies but actually they're not that credible um, and if you want people to take you seriously I always believe that you should really train to the highest level so mm. um, researching those yeah uh, no, that's great advice no, that's yeah. good 
Thank you. And I guess, you know, we're, we're wanting to also think about, we've, we've talked um, already about some of the advantages and some of the challenges faced by small business owners, you know, from, from your own personal experience. But I guess, you know, the, the environment that we find ourselves in right now with, um, you know, the, the kind of the, the following the effects of COVID and that everything that that's had on the economy and um, individuals. Um, but what would you see as the, the kind of the three challenges that as we move forward, maybe, maybe not this year, but as we certainly move into 2022 what what would you see as the main challenges that a small business owner would be facing around that time so um i think a lot of people not perhaps just small business owners but everyone what i'm what i'm hearing what i'm seeing what i'm talking to him listening to people talking about is how they're putting in more and more hours <laughs> mm. because we're even though we're moving into this sort of hybrid kind of working for a small business owner who might still be working out of their own um, space we tend to because there's nothing else so much not not so much to do you know we're not going on holidays we're not taking the breaks because we work perhaps from from a home environment we feel like um I don't know there's there's the boundaries are a little bit blurred so I'm a bit concerned that we'll see perhaps a more burnout perhaps where people are working harder longer hours without taking quite so many holidays hopefully that will begin to change you know as we go into next year and we open up a little bit more so um, yeah I think for everybody just to be more mindful of those boundaries and ensuring that we're still investing as much into ourselves as we are into our businesses um I think I think you're right certainly what I'm seeing with uh, small business owners as well is that those boundaries as you say are really blurred because you're not kind of leaving the house as much you're not you know maybe driving your children to places or um going out and as you say on holiday I think um yeah I, I, I can definitely see that that could be a potential challenge you know big challenge as we move forward for burnout and I think <clears throat> as well, you know, things are changing we're constantly managing change um, and the COVID-19 landscape is still changing. I imagine for some businesses, you know, that's quite difficult to navigate. You know, um, you can't forward plans for some businesses too much because of things might change, always having to have that fallback plan, plan, plan in place. Um, I guess every business has their own kind of challenges, but managing that and navigating through that is still ever-changing landscape. It's going to be a mm. bit for all. And then... Um, I don't know, one thing that I guess has always been a bit of a challenge and possibly even as we go through into next year, maybe other businesses don't survive um, or, you know, is, is cash flow. Mm. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, uh, being able, if we can't forward plan in quite the same way, you know, having that, um, you know, the, the, the business coming in, mm. acting cash flow, other businesses not being able to pay in yes. quite the same way. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. even, and it's always been a bit of a problem, isn't it? Cash flow, managing payments, late payments. Um, I know certainly some of my my bigger clients, their payment terms are sixty to ninety days. Wow, that's that's quite tricky for a small business owner to to manage. Mm, definitely, no, yeah. for sure, for sure. Brilliant. All right. Thank you ever so much for joining me um, today, Trisha. It's been really lovely to hear more about the Mind Hub and to hear about your background and your experience and your view on some of the challenges that small business owners face in today's, in today's quite tricky climate. Um, if anyone wants to find out a little bit more about you and the Mind Hub, what, what's the best place for them to go? Yeah, great. Um, get in touch. Uh, my website, uh, the Mind Hub, is www.themindhub.co.uk, and on there you'll find a wealth of ways to to get in touch. So please do. Brilliant. That's great. Thank you ever so much for your time this afternoon, Tisha. It's been lovely talking to you. Oh, and you, Sophie. Take care. Thank you. Take care.